Hi there, I'm Chris Kessler from Kessler Science. And in this video, I'm gonna be showing you how you can use my science writing prompts resource for online learning. The writing prompts can be used in class as printouts, or they can also be used digitally, which includes using them for distance learning. I'm gonna walk you through how to use them for distance learning now. Right now you're looking at the quick reference guide that shows you all the steps that I'll be covering. This is also included in the teacher instructions document that you receive with your purchase. So we're gonna be looking at downloading the files, choosing which version to use, how to open it in Google Forms, and then how to edit the Google Form, a couple of different grading options within the form and in the sheets, I'll give you some grading tips, and then how to distribute it to your class. If you purchase the product on Teachers Pay Teachers, you'll need to log into your account at the top right and then go to My Purchases. From there, you'll be presented with a list of all your purchases and you can download the most recent updates or versions of that particular file. I'm gonna pretend I just downloaded the files after purchasing. And what you're seeing right now is called Finder on the Mac. If you have a Windows computer, this is the same thing as Windows Explorer. It's just Mac's version of it. We're gonna be working with the renewable energy writing prompt throughout the video. So let's look at the files. You're gonna see a few files here. The files that have single student written after them are the ones that you would actually send to the students if you wanted them to work on it online. Now the file at the bottom without single student on the file is the one you're gonna to wanna to use if you're in class um, and it also contains the teacher directions and several different variations of the file that you can print out or project. It's important to note that the teacher directions are in here. So any of the Google uh, links, this is where you will find those, uh, those resources. Next, you're going to want to open up the Google Form, which is linked in the teacher instructions. This is where you'll manage the digital answer sheets for your students. So I'm going to paste the link into the browser here and open it up. And you'll want to choose Make a Copy so that you have your own version of the Google Form. So click Make a Copy. And then you're going to be prompted to uh, that there's going to be a missing file upload folders. All you'll do is just click restore on this. This is, this is setting up a place for your students to uh, eventually upload their final version of the writing prompt. So you just click on restore anytime you see that. And now you're inside the Google form. So this is the main Google form. It's not the form that you share with your students though. This is the back end of the form where the teacher can control all the settings. Now, each of these modules down here, each of these little boxes, um, is a question that students will see on the form. But we have the ability to change some of the settings, and I wanna go through some of those settings now. So, uh, required questions. The first three uh, modules that we have here are the email address, first name, last name, and then actually the fourth one is the class period or the block. And these are set to required, and you can see that by this little red asterisk here. Other questions should not be required, or the students are gonna be forced to finish all those required questions before they can submit, and this is how they save their work. They would risk quitting the file and then losing all their work. So you only wanna make those first few questions required. Now we've pre-written uh, a bunch of the questions and provided ample space for your students to reply. But if you wanna modify some of these questions and how they're worded, you can do so by clicking inside each of them. So we have some pre-writing space for them. So if you wanted to, to modify this for any reason, you can click here and then just change it here and this will modify it. I would suggest leaving these answer choices as long answer text because that gives the students plenty of space to, to respond to the to the actual questions. Now by default, students can edit their responses to change their answers after they click submit. Uh, and you can change this up in the settings. So we're gonna go back up to the top of the form and we're gonna click on this little gear in the top right, this is the settings. And then there's a the general tab that's automatically by default, comes up first. 
And you're going to first want to limit students to one response. You want to make sure that that is set um, because it's important that um, you limit them to one responses. Otherwise, every time they click on that link, it's going to create a new line item and you're going to sh have one student show up multiple times in your responses. You don't want that to happen. So you just want to make sure that this is set to, to one. And then you also want to, at least in my opinion, allow students to edit after they submit or they will need to complete the entire form without submitting, which saves their work. So make sure that this is checked right here. And then you'll just click, if you make any changes, you can click save in the bottom right hand corner. Although self-grading is not an, really an option for these writing prompts because every student is going to have a unique response, you can assign point values for the different portions. So you can give point values for the pre-writing, you can give point values for the final grade, and I'll show you how to do that. You'll click on this little gear at the top, this is the settings, and then you'll click on quizzes, and you'll set this to make a quiz. By default it is set to be off, I already played around with it, so I, I've turned it on. And you're going to choose later after manual review because you don't want students to get graded as they're progressing through it. So you choose this. And then you'll also choose uh, point values right down here at the bottom. You'll click on save and you'll go back in. You, you may see this again, the, the missing files upload folder. Anytime you see this, just click restore, super easy. So you'll scroll down to where the questions begin and you can now assign grade values. So click on the actual module. This is the first pre-writing question. And you can click on answer key here. Now, this doesn't have a, um, you know, this, this doesn't have a finite answer that, that is definite. So we're not gonna add a, a true answer key, but we can assign the point values here. So let's say I assign uh, 10 points or let's let's just go with uh, five points for this, right? And so I'm going to go in and off screen here. I'm going to do this for each of them. I'm going to add five points, and I'll uh, come back and and show you the the final version at the end here. Okay, I've gone in and added point values that add up to a hundred total points. So each of the pre-writing uh, questions gets five points and then the final writing assignment gets 70 points. So let's look at how you grade these things. There's a couple different ways you can do this. I've already put in some sample data so you can see that there's one respondent here. When I click on responses and I can click on individual here, I can choose all of the people that responded. So normally if you had a class full of respondents, you would see a full list of, uh, of everyone that's responded. And you can grade it this way. So you can go through, you can see that they've got zero of 100 points right here. And you can start going through and assigning point value. So obviously I didn't put in any kind of real value here, but I can decide that I'm gonna get five here, five here, or excuse me, uh, five there. Maybe I only got three here. Five here, five here. I didn't do anything here. And then the final paper I submitted, or the students submitted, I just put a placeholder file here, which is just an image. But let's say the final paper got um, 60 total points. So you can click on this file, read their final draft, grade it, and then add the point value here. And then at the top, you will click, or excuse me, at the bottom, click Save. And then you can click release score and that will send the score back to the actual student. So you can click send emails and release. If you, if you don't want to send them an email, then you can just release it, release it here. Now there's another way you can do this as well. Um, let's go back to the main page. So we're back at the main form. I can click on responses and then I can look at it as a spreadsheet view as well. So in this little green, um, icon here it says create a spreadsheet I'm gonna create a spreadsheet I can call it whatever I want I'm just gonna call it what it's suggesting that I call it I'll click create and it will pop up with a spreadsheet view of the student responses so you can see here's the question here list the advantages 
and you can view it pretty easily. Uh, you can view batch, you know, a batch of students this way and assign point values this way as well. So I've already assigned this score, so I got an 83 of 100. This is a quick way to, that you could use to enter grades into your grade book once you've graded them, and um, it's just a quick view. One other thing to note here is you can sort these columns. So I could you know, run some filters on this. I can do um, create a filter, just you know, pull out period one, alphabetize it, and then you know, have my grade book up beside it and enter the grades that way. So it's just a couple different ways you can do that. You can uh, do it from looking at it individually or you can look at it from a spreadsheet view. Last of all, I wanna show you how to send this to your students. So you're, you're done creating the form, uh, everything is ready to go and you wanna send this over to your students. This URL up here is not the URL that you send your students. Otherwise, they're going to have access to this back end. You don't want them to have access to that. So what you're going to do is up in this top right, there's a, a purple send button. You'll click on send. You'll choose send a link. You'll click this little chain link here. And I would shorten the URL. And then this right here is the URL that you're going to send them. So I'm going to pull it up in a, in a new tab here and show you what that looks like. This is the actual... Uh, form that they now I've already edited it so they're not going to you're going to see my answers already put in there this is what they're actually going to see though so they're not going to have any kind of options to edit any of these boxes or, or anything all they're going to do is they're going to have to fill out these questions do some pre-writing and then finally submit their final document um, before this this file is actually submitted there is a button that says upload here so you're going to actually have to send them some directions on how you want them to do this do you want them to submit a, a link to you do you want them to submit a, a word document would you rather them take a picture of their paper that they've written at their house or 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 at their desk and submit it here it, it's up to you to, de to determine how you want them to submit the final uh, prompt they can actually write in the the powerpoint the original powerpoint itself um, Although I would suggest Word or or um, Google Docs to do a final draft because that's how they're going to be doing it down and down the road. So that's how you'll do that. And you want to also be sure that you send the single student PDF to them as well because this is the one without the teacher directions. This just has the student directions on it. It tells them exactly what their mission is how to check themselves, what some of the pre-writing strategies look like, and then how their final draft is going to be formatted. So you send those two things with some simple directions, and you're on your way to a um, great writing prompt. All right, take care. If you have any questions at all, you can shoot us an email at chris at kesslerscience.com. Take care. If you're a middle school science teacher, I highly suggest joining the Kessler Science Professional Learning Network. It is a private Facebook group that has over 15,000 middle school science teachers that just love to share ideas, help each other, support each other, and they're from all over the country. It's guaranteed that you'll find someone from your state it's almost guaranteed that you get immediate responses when you have questions about science curriculum. Join us now. Go over to Facebook group, or excuse me, Facebook. Just type in Kessler Science Professional Learning Network and we'll get you approved. If you have any questions at all, again, email me at chris at kesslerscience.com and one of us will get back to you. Thanks.